So back in the backyard again under some clear, cool, such a Florida skies. project currently under progress is uh, IC443, the Jellyfish Nebula in uh, SHO. So I've shot hydrogen and I've shot oxygen and tonight I'm going to shoot sulfur. And the reason, one of the other reasons that I'm making this video is uh, because PhD2 has an upgraded version that does multi-star guiding. So I'm gonna kinda go over some of that and see if that uh, affects my guiding, see if my guiding's better. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So let me give you a little quick rundown of uh, all the tools and everything that it takes to get one of these images when it comes to the hardware. So the camera we have is the ASI 1600mm Pro. It's a mono camera, uh, cooled and I usually typically cool it down to like minus 20. And in front of it, I have the ZWO eight position, inch and a quarter filter wheel, electric filter wheel, electronic filter wheel. And threaded on to the front of that is my Mead Series 6000.8 times flattener reducer, it's a combo. So it brings the Mead Series 6000 APO uh, triplet refractor down to uh, 384 millimeters focal length at f4 and I've actually got I'm, I'm, I'm keeping up with the ZWO theme here I've got the ZWO uh, electronic autofocuser did not get the hand controller with it didn't really need it um, because I'm controlling everything through my imaging software Nina and on top of that, staying with the ZWO theme, is the uh, ASI 290 Mini. That's my guide camera. It's a mono guide camera. Super sensitive. So I've actually put an IR cut filter in front of it. Um, and it is slid into the Mead. God, I've got a theme going on between the ZWO and Mead. Uh, anyway, the Mead 50 millimeter guide scope, it's a, I think, 270 millimeter focal length, I believe. And both the, the APO, Mead APO triplet, Mead refractor, the guide scope, and the focal reducer all have a dew band wrapped around. That's very important. Uh, I've definitely noticed that if you don't put a dew band, a third dew band wrapped around the focal reducer, then uh, you're going to get some condensation possibly on the focal reducer or the, uh, the little piece of glass that's in front of the sensor itself. And all of this is sitting on top of the Orion Atlas. It's got a 40 pound capacity computerized go-to mount with uh, the SenScan hand controller. And what else? And it's all being powered by the uh, Pegasus pocket power box and the pocket power box is reading temperature it is uh, supplying power to the autofocuser to the camera and to the mount and it's also supplying power to the three uh, dew bands so that's basically it that's everything that I'm using tonight to uh, capture this image <laughs> Uh, so we're out here, it's dark, and uh, like I said, the target is the Jellyfish Nebula, IC443, and uh, it's in Gemini. I, I never say what constellation my targets are in, there's other guys that do that. I don't know, man, they're just there. So I haven't done a polar alignment for you guys in a while. Adjust glasses. So let's get over here to uh, my laptop imaging computer and I'm in SharpCat Pro to do a polar alignment. So here in SharpCat, I've got uh, 
my guide camera chosen. I'm shooting through the guide scope and guide camera. And I've got a nice little star pattern. I've got it set to 50%. Uh, That's a good place to start. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to come up here to uh, tools and click on polar line. And it's going to solve the sky. So it's solved. And so now the next thing I want to do is I want to click the next button here. And now it says rotate the axis. So let me go rotate the axis. So you want to rotate it to about uh, 90 degrees. So if your scope is at 12 o'clock, rotate it to 3 o'clock. Okay, so now we've rotated it. And it says we're good. And the reason that we're good is because my mount was already set up. <laughs> uh, so I've clicked next. And now you're going to see that these two little marks right here, let's zoom in on them. Let's go to 125%. It's one of the keys to really getting a good polar alignment. This little square box right here, the star, needs to be right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the computer. To the computer. I'm already at the computer. I'm going to go over here to my mount and I'm going to adjust the alt as bolts basically this way, this way until this star is in that little crosshair right there. And it's also going to say excellent and it's going to give me a, kind of like a left down error number reference here to follow. So it says I have to go down which because I've tilted the scope means I've got to adjust my mount left to right. I know that seems weird. You'll get used to it though. So just pushing my mount to the left. Whoa. And you're going to find that it will go out of the field of view sometimes. So I'm way too far. <clears throat> so let's go back up. So now I'm pushing it to the right. It's reacting kind of slow tonight. But that's pretty good. Pretty close. And what I can do is I can actually... I can move the exposure time up just a little bit. It gives me a little brighter image. But that's pretty close. Pretty dang close. So I'm going to lock everything down. I'm going to turn off sharp cap because it says <laughs> we're excellent and one thing one thing to note was that I uh, hold on let me do this not that <laughs> one thing to note was that I didn't electronically slew my scope I manually rotated on the RA axis um, and now I've rotated it back so that it's basically in the park position position that it was in when I was uh, showing you everything that I'm using. All right, so now I want to open up PHD2. I'm going to go over here to the connect button and I already have my guide camera set up to ASCOM2 and my mount. I'm going to click connect all and then I'm going to say loop. And basically it's going to start giving me a 2.5 second loop here. Um, let's minimize that. The imaging sequence program that I'm using is Nina. And I've connected the camera. It's cooled down to minus 20. I've got the filter wheel, the focuser, and the actual mount connected. So the last piece of gear that I have to connect is my guider, which is PHD2. I have it here in the drop down list. So turn it on. Let's expand PhD2, or excuse me, Nina. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna go over here to our sequencer tab, and we're gonna go down to this folder here. Click it, and it takes me to another folder where I have plans, and these are the plans that I have saved. So scroll down here to the Jellyfish Nebula. Let's open it up. I'm gonna delete this little generic target. 
And by the way, I've dropped back in Nina to 1.10. I didn't like the 1.11, it was too complicated. Uh, so I've gone back to 1.10. Uh, so tonight we're shooting sulfur. So I'm gonna turn off my hydrogen and off my oxygen. <coughs> and let's check out everything else. Let's drop down here to the autofocus. Um, one thing about Nina that I have noticed is that I want to make sure that I'm at the right filter. So I have S2 clicked, and I'm just going to do a quick loop here in the imaging tab. And I like to do that right off the bat for two reasons. Just make sure that I'm on the right filter when I start focusing. And the second reason is, is I want to make sure that my stars are somewhat in focus because I need them to be pretty sharp in order to uh, plate solve. So, and yes, Frankie see you all right so I got some pretty good looking stars so we're gonna turn off the loop <clears throat> we're gonna come back in here to the sequencing plan we've got it set autofocus on start autofocus on filter change even though we aren't doing any different filters today except for sulfur uh, we're gonna do a, an autofocus every 180 minutes and I've got on an HFR increase of 10%, we would do an autofocus. So it's gonna start guiding, it's gonna slew to the target, and it's gonna center the target. These are the things that happens first. And what else? <clears throat> we have over here an equipment telescope. We've unparked the scope, that's important. And we've got PhD2 going. So I think we are ready to slew to the target. So we're gonna hit the play button here. And one thing to notice is I'm shooting 100 frames at six minutes, it's a lot. And it's telling me that's gonna take me to 4.52 a.m. Um, but the old sequence, or this old 1.1, you don't have an ability to tell it to stop at a certain time. So you have to adjust your exposures to reach a certain time. And so right now, 452 is probably going to be passed. I'll probably take a pictures of the house. Who cares? I like my house. Uh, so the telescope is slewed to the target. It's really low on the horizon, which is the reason that I can get 100 subs in, hopefully. Uh, so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to do a plate solve. Let's see what kind of image we got coming up here. Gold. Oh look, I can actually see the jellyfish in a 10 second sulfur loop. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah. It's the first time imaging the jellyfish nebula in mono. I've done it with a DSLR. And it was okay. But the mono is turning out pretty good. The mono. So it has solved the image. And now it's saying that the telescope is not inside tolerance and it has to re to the target. Which is fine. That's what it's doing. That's what it's supposed to do. Oh, and in Nina, I use, uh, I use plate solve too for my solver. Works really good. Even if you're not quite focused. So, I don't know the name of these stars. Actually, let's go look them up. Oh, this thing is doing its thing. Well, the thing is doing its thing. We're gonna go look this up. We're gonna go to Stellarium. Because we're doing an autofocus right now, and that's boring. 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 Let's uh, turn on our DSOs. <coughs> Move around here. Pretty low on our horizon. Okay. So here we are. So this is Propus and Tijat. <laughs> Those are the two stars uh, that you see. Wait, wait, wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. That you see. Ah, crap. In my image. That's Propus and that's Tijat. <laughs> anyway, so we're now we're at the we're at the right spot. Let's minimize that. Put Stellarium back up. 
So this is a really cool target. Look how close they are. And this is something that I think when I get my uh, newt going, I'm gonna image this one next. The monkey head nebula. Look at that. Pretty cool. So we're getting a horrible curve, but that's fine. It'll work itself out. Plus it's pretty low. Oh, so yeah, so we wanted to talk about PhD2, so let's check it out, because it's guiding. Let's minimize it. Let's open PhD2 up. And look at that, would you look at that? Multi, multi-star guiding. And we started out a little, little woozy, but we're leveling off, let's clear it. We didn't do a calibration. That could be it. But that's saying something because we didn't calibrate. So let's see. So apparently now, PhD2 is not only locking on to a star here, uh, but it's averaging out the movement of all these other stars. And let's turn down the screen exposure to get a little more contrast. We can actually increase our loop exposure to three seconds. So, I mean, check it out. We got a pretty flat graph, you know, for no calibration. I mean, it was calibrated like last week. That's so all I did was set the uh, mount up and polar line it. And, you know, we're under one second. Can't argue with that. And if you notice, this line has jumped up right here. It's basically measuring your star half-flux radius, your star brightness. And you know, the lower this this goes, um, the dimmer the star is, and the worse the guiding gets. So sometimes increasing this exposure to three seconds, you'll see this creep up, which means you're getting a better star uh, for it to follow. But now we're following oodles of stars, which is pretty cool. I'm liking it. And we're, look, we're, we're kind of averaging out. We're under one second. I mean, you can't ask for better than that. Let's go back here to Nina. Let's see what we got going on. We're exposing. <clears throat> so, in typical entering into space fashion, I am shooting uh, 360 seconds, six minutes at uh, gain, unity gain, gain 139, offset 50. Um, yeah, so when we come back, I'll show you what a six minute sulfur sub looks like. But if we clear out our, uh, clear our, our guiding graph, to where it had all that little start off kind of, I don't want to, kind of wonky stuff. Let's see. I mean, 0.29. Multi-star guiding. That's where it's at. What are we doing on battery? Doing good. <coughs> and now we've jumped back up. <laughs> but that's to be expected. I'm digging it. So at the end of the night, um, we're gonna shoot 100 sulfur subs. And judging by just the uh, one little exposure here, this little 10 second exposure, I can already see some nebulosity in here which is uh, a good telltale sign for what the final six minutes sub is gonna look like. The, uh, if you're shooting this one <clears throat> in mono and you're shooting your hydrogen and your sulfur, hello Frankie, bye Frankie. Um, oxygen is really weak. It's like right at the base of what I call like the brain. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little bit of signal in there for the oxygen, obviously. Sulfur. Sulfur is, or excuse me, hydrogen is super strong. But uh, here in in about four minutes, we're gonna see what some sulfur looks like. All right, what do we got here? Let's see what we got. First sulfur sub coming in. What? What? Look at that, man. Look at that. That is crazy. 
Wow, I'm impressed. Let's look at our statistics. 2.53 for an HFR, that's good tight stars. Let's uh, take a little trip around this thing. Man, that's a good looking uh, sub. And that's low on the horizon too, you can't see it, uh, but it's pretty low. I mean, let's look over here. We're now, so I'm at under 30 degrees. Boop. That's peak, and I'm back down. So, that's crazy. That's a crazy, crazy, crazy looking image. It's almost like I messed up and I have sulfur or hydrogen going on that looks so good. But it's not, because all this would be filled in if it was a hydrogen, so. Wow, look at that sulfur. <laughs> cool. And our uh, our guiding is okay. It's under one second, so I'm happy. All right, I'm gonna shut all these lights off and leave you guys because it's super clear and I just want to look at the stars. All right. Okay. Until next time. Clear skies and clear minds. Thank mm -hmm. you.